Hey, it's Grizzly Adam. Today I'm making a Secret Santa gift on Firewood Hoarders TV. I'm not sure who started this on the forum, but one of the guys posted a thread that said, Hickory Syrup, it's awesome. And well, it is. The Shagbark Hickory naturally shed its bark, hence the name. And if you have any of these trees in your area, you can just go and peel the bark off or even pick it up off the ground. Just make sure you don't take any of the stuff that's attached too well. Bring it home, scrub it up, get rid of all the fungus and stuff, and bake it in your oven for about 20 minutes till it's nice and toasted. Chop it up, put it in a pot like you got here, and add some boiling water. I'm going to do this to the point where it's pretty much covered. I'm going to use about two gallons here. On the back side of the bark there's a thin membrane, and that's where the flavor actually comes from. And so what we're going to try to do is boil this until we reduce it about half. And we'll end up with a nice amber little syrup. I'm just going to push all that down in there right now. There we go. Alright, so it's been boiling and as you can see, a lot of the water is gone. Let me just start pulling this on out by hand. I like to save this. I can put it either in the smoker or I can use it to start fires. It'll dry out in mm, about a day. There we go, we're getting down into where you can see the liquid. Makes a nice little extract. I'm actually going to make a diabetic version for my parents. And, you know, after tasting it, I think I might even want to boil that down to just about 25% left. Because that uh, artificial sweetener kind of gives it a bit of a funky taste. We'll just keep digging this all out. Already you can start smelling how good the syrup's going to taste. You know, every time I use this to start a fire, it makes me hungry for pancakes. Alright, next we need to uh, strain what's left. I'm going to put down a couple different layers here. This is a thin, almost uh, muslin cloth. And I'm just going to throw a typical bath towel, which we use as a kitchen towel. Use it to strain things like this and yogurt and cheeses and whatnot. So we'll just start dumping this on out. You can see there's still little chunks of bark in there and other impurities. There we go. That should be the last of it there. Yep. And a little bit of junk left in the bottom of the pot that I didn't feel the need to dump out. All right, now we carefully start gathering up the cloth here. We don't want any of those impurities to escape. And so this setup, it's actually double filtration, but it's all in one fell swoop. That way we don't have to come up with another container to filter back into. Just let all that run out. All right, now we'll do the same with the next layer. Just Try to keep all those contaminants nice and contained in here. Almost looks like coffee. There we go. Let that pour on out. Alright, and get rid of this calendar. Get every last drop. Now it's time to actually make our syrup. Let's start by separating this. We need to keep track of how much of the extract we have. Because we need to use a specific ratio for the sugar. And for each cup of sugar we need to add a specific amount of creamy tartar and of corn syrup to prevent crystallization and to keep it shelf stable respectively. Alright, so that's two cups there. That's going to be for the diabetic version. And we'll start getting this ladled out for our uh, regular syrup. Now this syrup's good for more than just uh, waffles and pancakes. I used it on some barbecue ribs a while back and man did those turn out good. The old lady uses it in her coffee every morning. It just gives everything kind of a unique flavor that you just can't put your finger on it. You'll see what I mean once you try it. 
This big measuring cup holds about four cups. So we're just going to get that filled up and dump that over into the big pressure cooker I was using as a stock pot earlier to boil down and make the extract. And then we'll be able to get an accurate measurement on what's left here in the bowl. We'll go just dump that right in. Now we'll just move that spoon aside. Don't have much of a chance of spilling it anymore. So, yep, that's about five cups. So we're going to have to put in 10 cups of sugar because it's two cups of sugar for every cup of the extract. And so I ended up going through about 10 pounds of sugar to make this batch here. Just keep dumping it in and get it all mixed in here in a bit. You don't have to be terribly precise. That's kind of why we're using the corn syrup. It kind of acts as a buffer to prevent crystallization. And the more sugar you have in it, the more likely you are to crystallize because your solution is past its saturation point. We could add less sugar and it would taste almost as good. But at the same time, that would make it so it's more likely to go bad, even in the refrigerator. All right, I'll add the rest of that here in a minute. Just go ahead and move on up to the corn syrup or caro syrup. We're going to add one teaspoon of this for each cup of sugar that we used. And the creamy tartar that we will add in, we're going to use a quarter teaspoon for each cup of sugar as well. So it'll end up being 10 teaspoons of the corn syrup. And should be just under a tablespoon of the creamy tartar. If I did my math right. So we got a few more of these to go yet. Just keep the camera right on here and let you watch me work, I guess. So for those of you who aren't really in the know, we are having a Secret Santa giveaway over at FirewoodHoardersClub.com. And so a bunch of the guys signed up and we're actually shipping presents to everybody, and I drew Dave USCG, which I think is United States Coast Guard. Or it could be a bunch of other stuff, I don't know. But anyway, come Christmas morning, he's going to have this, and shortly thereafter, I'm going to release the video. Because I don't want to, I don't want any spoilers. Yeah, I'd be about done with the syrup by now, I would think. Yep, there we go. And the cream of tartar. Let's get that right in there. I'll do that, and then we'll mix it on up. Alright, so this went back on the king and got it all cooked together, and it's now a syrup and this is one of my older batches here you can see all the crystallization because we had reached our saturation point and didn't have anything to buffer it which is why again we're using that corn syrup and so we're going to go ahead and put this in the molasses bottle I have here I'm going to use a bottle to ship it over to Dave hopefully it won't do any leaking on the way Just ladle that right in there. Man, look at that color. Nice and amber. 
it really lightens up once you add all the uh, sugar no longer that dark coffee color that, that'll about do it and I picked up a nice cruet from the Wally World and so once that gets over to Dave he can put his syrup in that alright now where's my pancakes there they are thank you I'm gonna need some syrup with that yeah I got the hickory stuff right here alright looks like it's about time to dig in I'll see you next time on Firewood Hoarders TV